Good morning guys, my name is Alex. As you may know, I am an educator at the Emerald Coast Science Center. What you might not know is that I am also a vet assistant at the Santa Rosa Veterinary Clinic in Milton, Florida. Um, so today I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about veterinary science. Um, I will be talking to you a little bit beforehand before we go in just because I'll have to wear a mask as soon as we get in there. Um, right now we're doing curbside service so we're not having any humans come in but we are uh, bringing the animals in through the door still. Um, we're just trying to decrease the um, spread of COVID and so we're taking all the necessary precautions. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit out here before I put my mask on and you can't really understand me too well. Um, so. I am a vet assistant. I am not a vet tech. There is a difference between the two. So a vet assistant doesn't go to school and uh, get a degree like a registered veterinary technician would. Um, it typically takes, on average, I think about two years for a vet tech to get their degree. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less. It just depends on the individual. Um, as far as being a vet assistant goes, some states allow this, some states do not. So. Um, you can have very similar duties to a registered vet technician. So some of my duties here will include bringing the animals in, helping the doctors with routine exams, um, helping administer vaccinations, give medication, um, instruct clients on how to care and treat for their uh, animal. Um, I will help the doctor look at the ears, eyes, nose, um, just the entire body. We do take skin samples, we take fecal samples, we take temperatures, weights. Um, I help the doctor do dentals and I also help him do surgeries. And so um, we have a variety of tasks. Sometimes I will fill in as receptionist um, just when we get really busy and crazy. Um, but typically I am very hands-on with the animals. I get to help provide their care quite a bit. And so um, I have a four years bachelor's degree um, and I have a couple different um, experiences from a variety of backgrounds. Um, I've worked with SEALs, I've worked in rescue and rehab at an aquarium, I've worked at a shelter, and now I'm working at the Science Center, of course, with all of our wonderful animals that you may have seen, as well as the wonderful animals here at the Santa Rosa Veterinary Clinic. Um, so I am gonna go ahead and show you guys uh, what we're doing today, um, and I'm gonna show you some pictures, some really cool things, uh, things we might find under the microscope or different samples from animals. Uh, you don't have to worry about seeing any surgeries today. We do have some scheduled. However, I know that they're a little bit more in depth and uh, maybe a little bit gory or something that you don't wanna see. So I don't want to offend any viewers. Um, so we're not gonna show any surgeries or anything like that today. So you can keep tuning in if you do uh, are a little bit worried um, that we're gonna see something. Um, I'll make sure that we don't see too much gross stuff today. But uh, let's get to it. Um, really interesting. Hopefully you guys find it as fascinating as I do. And so I'm gonna show you, this is our pharmacy with our microscopes and some of our medication over here. We have our blood machines over here where we run all the tests to see how blood work looks. This is our surgery area. So the doctor does all of his work back here. Um, you can see our machines that we monitor patients on. This is our x-ray machine, and so we take patients back here to do radiology. And then this is our dental area. You can see our dental machine over here, so we will do tooth extractions and cleanings here. This is our autoclave, so that's what's going to sanitize all of our materials. This is our vaccination fridge, which has multiple things um, that we use daily. So vaccines include rabies, distemper, lepto, combo, or the nine-way vaccine, Bordetella, Lyme, flu, FERCP, FELV, and then also in this fridge we have our chem panels and rotors for blood work machines. So being a vet assistant takes a whole lot of hard work, dedication, and care. You'll be on your knees and feet a lot. You'll be walking around standing. You might even be running from time to time. So here's Lucretia and Michelle giving fluids to a dog and making sure that he's okay. As much as I'd like to say that it's all about hugging cute kittens and puppies all day, it's not. You do have uh, perks such as feeding baby goats, or in this case, there's an armadillo that you might be rehabilitating. Vet assistants can do a variety of work. They can do uh, cats and dogs. They can work with exotics or farm animals. Um, but there is a lot of care. You might even find yourself with a couple new pets at home um, due to this field. Um, puppies and kittens are what gets us through the hard times, but um, you do have a balance of all of that. You might find yourself getting crafty. So in this case, a hamster with a makeshift cone to keep chewing for himself. 
A rat that's recently had surgery needs a cone. And even a sugar glider will need a cone. Sometimes there's cones not small enough um, to fit these animals. At times you will be bringing your work home with you. You will find that you will foster a lot. It'll be really rewarding and watch them grow. I've had a couple of my own stories with these. So this is my uh, bottle baby, Queso. I got him when he was about two weeks of age. You can see his little ears wiggling there. That means he's got a really good latch on that bottle. And so when he first came in, he was covered in fleas. A man found him, couldn't get him to eat, and basically threw him across the counter at us and told him to take care of it. We put a little sweater on him to keep him warm after his bath. Um, and I took him home. You put him in a stroller. I've got my dog there caring for him. That same dog has his own story. This is Espy the first day that I saw him and laid my eyes on him. He was brought in, someone saw him get hit by a car. He actually had two broken back legs. And you find yourself roping your loved ones into these situations and it turns out to be really, really cool to see. Um, Espy also went in that stroller. And here he is with his cast on. Um, I was going to adopt him out, but we fell in love with him too much. As you can see, he's adapted really well in those casts. He's walking, he's not letting it get in his way. And he's super sweet. Espy did have those casts on for about six weeks. Um, he got a lot of love in that meantime, of course. And here he is after those casts were removed. As you can see, he's walking a little bit funny still, but he's adjusting to it. And uh, these days, about a year later, he is walking perfectly fine. He is running, jumping. He is absolutely full of energy and life. And he even has a baby sister now that he runs the, runs the roost with. Here these two are now. Queso is about seven months old and Espy is about a year and four months old. And he is now weighing in at almost 80 pounds. So he went from that cute puppy to this big boy. So, let, so let's get stuck into this medical side. So we have to rock the blood so it doesn't stick together. Some of it we do have to spin down to separate the serum from the blood. Um, so that goes into a centrifuge and it spins it really fast in order to separate it. Um, we're gonna have layers in a moment. So that right tube, you can see the clear on top, that is the serum. On the left, you'll see a bottle that doesn't have um, the separation. That's because we didn't spin it down. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and get this blood ready to go into the machine. So this is a super chem panel. You have to be careful and touch only the sides so that you don't contaminate it. Um, so I've just removed this out of the centrifuge. You can see that serum floating on top. And so now I'm just gonna take a micro pipette and draw a little bit of that serum off the top. And so I'm gonna put that into a small hole that's located on the top of this panel. And so then we are going to remove the micro pipette. We're gonna properly discard into the sharp spin and put it back. And so now we're gonna carefully handle it at those sides again. And we're gonna go ahead and place that into our machine. And so that machine is gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes to analyze that blood. And so this machine tests a variety of things, including like how the liver and kidneys So this is next machine is where we put our purple top tubes that we were, had on the rocker. Um, so this is the CVC machine. It does things like count uh, red and white blood cells, platelets, um, how the blood clots, basically the quality of the blood and the health of the animal. And so we're gonna wait for our results and it'll pop up on this screen after about five minutes. This is our heartworm test. We take a blood sample, drop it in with a buffer solution, and it'll tell us if a dog is heartworm positive. So heartworms are a parasite that is transferred actually by mosquito bite. The mosquito has to bite an infected dog and transfer it into another dog. Um, it is preventable, there is prevention for it, and it is treatable in dogs and cats. It is not, unfortunately, at the moment. So this is a FELV FIV combo test for a cat. The C is control, L is for the FELV, and then FIV is the I. And so ghost here is positive for FIV. Um, so that is that line appearing under the eye there. So this is a parvo test on a puppy. It did come back positive, as you can see under that T there. Again, that C is control, so we want that line there, but not under the T. Um, so that can result in death for a puppy. Um, however, it can be treated as long as treatment um, does come quickly. Um, 
it can be fatal to older dogs and young puppies just because of their immune systems. It is completely preventable with proper uh, vaccination. As vet assistants, we do lots of gross things. So um, this includes uh, playing with a dog's poop. So we have to take that poop sample um, either directly from the source, which is the back end, or a owner can bring a sample in. And we have to put that into one of these small tubes, as you can see that we're doing here from the fecal loop. Next, we're going to use Fecosol to um, put all the way at the top. So what we need is that feces to float to the top in order for the parasites in that poop um, to float. And so then we just put a microscope slip cover over top of it and leave it for somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes in order for all the parasites to float up. Next, we take that slip cover, put it on an actual slide, and we go ahead and place that under our microscope. So you can see some of our parasites examples there. And then this is just me looking around for um, any kind of parasites. I didn't really find anything. This is a hair follicle, which was kind of cool to see. Um, there's lots of bubbles on this one. And you can see little um, matters of poop. So this uh, sample was a little bit bloody. So you can see the poop is a little bit more red in color. And so we're just searching around the slide and I have examples here. These are roundworms found in a fecal of a dog. This image shows whipworms. So we have a glob of feces up top, but just below that we do have an example of Demodex, which is a type of mite that lives on the skin. It's not typically found in fecals, but we did find it in these two samples. And this is a video of a tapeworm laying eggs. Um, so it's kind of gross. You can see it moving around in there. Um, but it's not often that you do see this under a microscope. This is the slide outside of the microscope, so you can actually see all those eggs in that tapeworm. This ant was found inside of a fecal. And this image shows coccidia and hookworms. I just wanted to show you guys what uh, roundworms look like outside the body. And this is a fly larvae that was found in a dog's fecal. This is a video of ear mites. It's a really bad infection. You can actually see all of those ear mites crawling around in this animal's ear. And here's a video of one of those ear mites crawling around under the microscope. You can see actually a second one there. And then this is a bunch of them. There are a lot on this slide. And you can see more here just feeding on all the ear wax. If that's not enough to make your skin crawl, look at all these lice that are found on a dog. This is a sucking louse that came off of a rat. And this one is a chicken louse or lice. Um, and this is a female full of eggs. And then this is the male version of that. And this is some fungal hyphae. It's that green color you're looking at. Um, found on a skin tape prep um, to indicate infection. And so this little grayish part you see here is a normal skin cell. However, this large purple area up here um, is a yeast. And then there's some more yeast on this slide as well. And this is an image of sperm, so you'll usually use this if you're breeding dogs just to see how, how reproductive they are. And then this video kind of shows them moving around on a slide. And this just shows you some microfilaria. So this is a heartworm positive dog. That microfilaria is that positivity. You can see it on both these videos that worm moving around through the red blood cells. So what you're looking at here are echinocytes after a rattlesnake bite. So that's all red blood cells. They're normally round on the edge. However, you can see they're spiky and agitated, so they're abnormal. And this last image just shows urine. We do urinalysis to indicate a UTI. So on that microscope there, 
um, that little slide, you'll see crystals. They're just for in, um, rectangles or square shapes. So now we're going to segue into x-rays. So here's a reminder of what our x-ray machine looks like. So this is an x-ray of a loon that uh, ate a fish hook. You can see it right here. And here's a picture of that loon. It's gone under surgery. That tube is supposed to be in there to help him breathe. So we do have tools to measure bones on x-rays. So you can see that off to the left, a normal bone length. And off to the right, you can see that broken bone. This next image is where it is plated. It's that same bone. They've put a plate in there to repair. This is the x-ray of a border collie who got hit by a bus. Um, luckily, this is the only injury sustained other than a little bit of road rash. This is the before and after picture of an eight-month-old Nigerian dwarf goat with a fracture. Um, it hasn't completely healed properly. However, it is completely functional for this goat. So this x-ray doesn't show an injury, but more of a mutation. You can see that bone where it's twisted during formation. It's quite unique. This x-ray shows a dog with two broken legs. Uh, both of them have been plated and repaired. This is one of our favorite kind of x-rays. You can see the puppies in this dog's stomach. So you can see the skulls and the spines. Um, typically ultrasounds will help you identify the number more correctly just because the organs and the bones get in the way on x-rays. Um, but it's still really cool to see. Here's an x-ray of a bearded dragon who ate a suction cup. You can just see it off to the left in his stomach there. Here is another x-ray of babies. Um, if you look closely, you can see the spines and the skulls. Here's an x-ray of a bird. Um, you don't have to worry about that fancy hat. That's actually a mask to help him breathe while they have him sedated so that they could get the x-ray better. This is the x-ray of a dog who had been fixed up on its bone. However, it wasn't given enough rest and was too hyper. The owner allowed it to run around and it ended up breaking that area again. This is the x-ray of a turtle. I just thought you guys would really like to see one of those. There's another interesting x-ray of a bird just for you to take a look at. And this is the x-ray of a dog who inhaled or aspirated barium um, into its lungs. It's just kind of a cool image. The dog did recover. It did take some time, um, but it's okay now. Cool x-ray of a lizard for you to check out. And if you look at that bottom there, there are two eggs inside. Topic of eggs, here's an egg inside of a bird. Kind of interesting to check out. And this is a pregnant chameleon. You can kind of see the head and the body there uh, by the feet of the chameleon. These ones are not to be confused with an egg. These are actually bladder stones inside of a 13 pound chihuahua. And here's those bladder stones removed after surgery. So you can see just how big they are in the palm of this person's hand. And these are bladder stones in a three pound chihuahua. Um, you can see the different shapes that bladder stones can form in. And here is another x-ray of a bearded dragon. She is absolutely full of eggs. You can just see them in that stomach there. And here's the x-ray of a poor dog that ate a screw. You can see that screw perfectly in that image. Here is the x-ray of a dog with food bloat. The dog was constipated and wouldn't eat anything. Owners were really concerned, so they brought him in and we got x-rays and there's lots of food in that stomach. Here's the x-ray of a small Maltese dog. They actually had to do a c-section right after this, but uh, that's the image of the puppy right there in the stomach. This is the x-ray of a puppy with megasophagus. Um, so they can live with this disease. It's enlarged in those intestines you can see there. Um, it can be difficult to breathe and eat. Um, this is actually, you might have seen videos online of dogs having to sit in chairs and eat upright like a human does. Um, these chairs were specially made for them so that they uh, can better digest their food and so that they don't regurgitate it or struggle to breathe afterwards. Um, they can live a long, happy life with this, but you do have to manage it properly. This is an image of a parrot with a catheter in its wing. So what's really cool about catheters is that you can insert them into the veins and it allows us to supply fluid continuously throughout those veins. And you can also give some medication through that if we need to put it in straight into their bloodstream.
Check out this very pregnant guinea pig. You can see just how big that stomach's gotten, and you can see those skulls and those spines of those babies. She looks like she's ready to burst at any moment. We're gonna move on to ultrasounds. Um, the ultrasound machine does take images of any area that you want on the body. Oftentimes in human medicine, we use it for ultrasounds of a baby. Um, in this case, we are using it for bladder stones. So you can see that there's a measurement there of a, of a large bladder stone. Um, and we do end up doing surgery to remove those. And this is an ultrasound of a pregnant cat. They are searching for the kittens. And you'll see here towards the end some movement. You can see that kitten just fidgeting right there. So I said I wasn't going to show you any surgeries. Um, this is just an image of a dog that is about to go into surgery. You can see the vet nurse with her clipboard. So she's going to be monitoring heart rate, blood pressure, um, how fast the fluids are going into the body, um, any signs of distress while under so that the doctor is aware um, needs to stop and, and fix the dog if so otherwise. Um, most surgeries do go routinely. You can see that cat up there. That cat is wide awake. That is actually a therapy cat. A lot of vet clinics will have animals there to comfort the surgery patients. And don't worry about that tube in that dog's mouth that is supposed to be there that actually goes down into their um, throat and helps them breathe while they are under anesthesia. These are the results of a surgery. You can see all these bladder stones, various shapes and sizes. Um, there's one that is the size of this person's hand. Uh, it's doesn't matter what size the animal is. They can grow very big, very small. Um, it can be very painful, so it's vital that we get those out. Next image is the results of an exploratory surgery. So the animal would not eat, would not do anything, wasn't acting right. And so he, uh, the doctor went in and found six socks and a t-shirt as well as blankets um, that the dog had managed to eat and was not able to digest. And this next one's a little bit entertaining. You can see that this dog has eaten eight rubber duckies, all of different occupations. And you can see that x-ray above there. You can see the shapes of the ducks. So as vet technicians and vet assistants, we come across a variety of things in the office daily. So this dog here is getting laser therapy on her ear for an ear infection. Um, this dog here has an ear hematoma, and that's where a lot of liquid will... Um, blow that ear up as you can kind of see that does need to be drained sometimes uh, it does require surgery other times it can go away on its own after you um, remove the liquid this dog has canine teeth but has retained its baby canines as well so you can see those double teeth there and a little bit of plaque buildup or grossness in between there so you need to make sure you brush your dog's teeth quite often here is a kitten with two different colored eyes. It's very unique. Um, doesn't affect the eyesight or vision at all. Just something kind of cool to look at. As you can see, this cat has some trauma done to the eye. Can result in an ulcer. Does require some medication in order to heal up. Otherwise, the cat can go blind over time without treatment. This is a cat with Horner syndrome. Um, Horner syndrome is a disrupted nerve pathway on one side from the brain to the face and the eye. It often results from trauma. So as you can see, on one side of the cat's eye, um, it is dilated. The other side, it isn't really reacting to light and that's likely due to trauma in the past. So this cat has congenital erythropoietica. <laughs> Porphyria, sorry about that. Um, it's a rare hereditary disease that cats, cattle, pigs, sheep, and people can even get. Um, so there is a, um, it results from low levels of an enzyme in the production of heme, which is uh, part of hemoglobin, which carries oxygen throughout the blood. So animals that have this have reddish brown discoloration of their teeth, bones, and their urine, um, and it continues from birth throughout their life. Um, animals that have this should not be bred. Cats um, display this in their teeth just like this one does. And if you put the teeth under the black light, it glows pink, as you can see here. This is a dog with a severe overbite. Um, so he can still eat just fine. It can be a little bit of a struggle compared to normal dogs. But as you can see, that overbite causes that upper jaw to be a lot longer than that lower jaw. And this is a heart from a dog from way back in the 1980s that had heartworm disease. You can see those worms in there. Um, again, it is a disease that dogs do get from mosquitoes. Um, it is easily transferable. Uh, it's very um, predominant here in uh, Florida as well as uh, definitely the Panhandle area. 
Um, you can't get prevention for this. Um, and there is treatment if your dog does come down with this. There is prevention for cats. However, there is not a cure at this time. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you guys found this stuff interesting. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to drop it in the comments below or give us a message and we'll get back to you. Um, I do want to give a big shout out to Santa Rosa Veterinary Clinic for letting me film today um, and letting me use some of their stuff, as well as a shout out to my fellow um, vet assistants and technicians for providing me videos and photos of things that they've seen that I've been able to um, show you guys. Um, unfortunately, we are still closed. Um, at the moment, we are still doing these videos for you guys. And we also have some really cool to-go kits that you can order from us. Um, there's more information online. We can also put a, a link up for you guys to see that as well. Um, they're really cool take-home kits that you can do to just get your little taste of science at home while we are still closed. Um, but we are hoping to open back up soon, and we will see you guys hopefully in June. Um, hope you guys have a great day. Thanks!